Hi guys, this is the second part of Modified uh, FX Wars. This is where we left off in the first part, uh, just completed doing the spawn laser. And we only have um, animations left. So what we're going to do is um, start with this one and um, continue. So the application now looks like something like this. Um, so it is slightly modified version of FX Wars we did a while ago. So you can shoot enemies, um, this is essentially a Geometry Wars clone. So play score animation is uh, the animation played when you get cer certain points, whether um, after destroying an enemy or uh, getting uh, picking up a power-up. So we create a score, uh, or we create an entity called um, score entity, give it type score, we translate x and y, so we position the entity uh, where the object is, so this is the object that will be passed, um, stating where exactly to start the animation from, um, in terms of x and y coordinates. Um, this is the text, which is graphics. So new text string value of um, this particular value, which is an integer, and this will convert it to a string. And then we set uh, fill color to white smoke, which is pretty much just white, <clears throat> so that the text will be displayed in white color. And finally, we set graphics uh, to our entity, um, and this is the object that we're passing. We then add it to the list of entities so that it could be displayed on the screen. And finally, there is a translate transition, which is a native JavaFX um, animation or trans transition. Um, duration of one second and the node on which uh, we're going to use the animation is score entity, which is our entity. We set 2x and 2y. 1150, which are the coordinates of um, our UI element, somewhere along these lines. Yeah, there we go. This is where our text score um, is initially positioned, so that the um, animation and coordinates will be over there. So the score just sort of floats um, towards our uh, text uh, UI element, which is kind of cool. So uh, this is the code that will be executed when the animation is finished. And we would like to remove the entity so that it is no longer displayed on the screen. And we then actually increment the score um, property by this amount and we play the animation. So that's it for this core animation. Then we have um, death, um, enemy death animation. This is the sort of normal when you hit it with a bullet. And there is also death animation by laser when, we, uh, when the laser hits the enemy. So we first remove the enemy so it is no longer displayed. Um, because the enemy is rectangle, we are removing the rectangle and replacing it with uh, bunch of particles as you can see on the screen and these particles are essentially uh, smaller rectangles um, with these properties so width and height of two and because our initial enemy rectangle is 40 by 40 the rectangle smaller rectangles need to be multiplied by 20 to get a 40 by 40 rectangle so we essentially replace our proper rectangle with a miniature rectangles and then just decimate them. So this is, um, and that whole thing creates a disintegration kind of thing. Um, we place core animation, so that one. Um, we add a hundred when we destroy an enemy. Then for, um, so basically within two, these two loops we create um, these particles and position them properly so that they will um, create an illusion of a whole rectangle. Set fill color, color red and graphics to the particle entity. Um, 
this is the velocity vector. So we create a random, we basically take random values and then multiply it by two, which gives us sort of speed. We set property uh, vector vector so that we could obtain that uh, object, this object in the control. So if the control was in a different class, we could have we could still have a reference to the original vector object. And this is the behavior uh, or control in the entity component system, and that we have. And, and this is this defines how an object will uh, how an entity will behave on each update. So we obtain the vector, which is this one, using get property because it's exactly the same property. Make sure you don't make a mistake in typing the um, string, uh, which uh, is the key to get a property. Uh, in the future versions of FXGL, we'll be using uh, more type safe um, property keys instead of just strings. So we then replace the set. Uh, replace the vector property with a new one, which is just uh, 0 0.05 um, greater in terms of y value than the original one. This will make the the, the vector point towards um, down towards bottom um, every single time we execute. So this will essentially create an effect of gravity. Uh, and then we tr translate our entity, so basically move using the vector x and y. And if get translate, uh, if the y value of an entity is greater than 720, 720 is the height of our window or height of our application, um, then w there is no need to display it and we can remove the entity so that it could then clean it, uh, clean up after itself. Uh, once we declared or in initialized our protocol or our entity, we then added to the list of entities and because it's an enemy death animation, we play the sound of um, enemy death. So the explosion basically. Death by laser is slightly easier. Um, we set use physics false because it is still um, the object is still displayed on the screen and is participating in the collision detection, but we no longer want it to participate because technically it is already dead. Uh, we then remove all controls so it is no longer moving um, our enemy, and we play score animation again. Uh, we increase the score by 100, and then we define a native. Um, JavaFX animation, which is scale transition, and then we scale it uh, from 1 to 0 in Y axis. And you'll see this effect, uh, so it basically shrinks the enemy, as opposed to being disintegrated uh, when you shoot an enemy with a bullet. And this effect, uh, this effect can be achieved by doing this. And set and finished, we now remove the entity from the screen and we play the um, transition. Bullet death animation is slightly more complicated. Um, we first remove the bullet from the screen and from the list of entities. We then get a random color um, using um, hue saturation and then uh, brightness. Um, this gives sort of slightly brighter effect uh, rather than simple RGB. Then we uh, get number random number of particles. Um, so this is uh, from 0 to 19 and then plus 20. So there is at least 20 particles. We then, uh, for each of the particle, we create uh, an entity, set position where the bullet was. Uh, we create or define the graphics for each particle, which is a rectangle of width 5 and um, height 2. We then set, set fill, um, so the color is basically the one we created before. Then drop shadow effect 
um, using glow as an input creates this sort of um, glowy effect um, around each rectangle. Finally, we set the graphics to the particle. Um, this is again a random uh, vector, random velocity for each of the particles. Uh, this is the angle um, so that our particle it moves along its um, vector, so it's rotated correctly. And this is where we um, actually rotate the um, particle. Then we capture the spawn time of a particle so that we can um, use our manual timer to keep track of the um, lifetime of an entity and if it goes over uh, one half of a second then we remove the entity and this is the control for the particle so we simply obtain um, the vector object we translate it using the vector objects x and y magnitude or x and, um, x and y coordinate um, so it's basically length in each of the directions to move for an entity and we set opacity this is basically see-through effect and the opacity gets decreased um, every 60th of a second by this value and finally we add it to the list of entities so it is now displayed and um, it sort of uh, yeah, so it could be displayed on screen. And that's pretty much it for the animations. And hopefully we'll be able to do a bit more uh, complex stuff with FXGL next time. And thanks for watching.